Hey guys, Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana today with episode number 13 of Explore the Card, where we take a deep dive into a Michael Jordan insert or parallel, or parallel insert in this case, uh, from the 1990s. Uh, as you can see, here's a thumbnail and your picture in picture. I want to get you started. And to do that, let's start by talking about the uh, the set itself that it comes from. Uh, so we're talking about the 1992 uh, Bean Team uh, insert, as well as the 1992 Stadium Club Bean Team members only parallel insert. Uh, so the first thing we always like to do is we're going to take a look over here at the um, trading card database uh, website and we're going to take a little background look at the set that this insert and insert parallel uh, parallel insert comes from so it comes from the 1992 stadium club uh, base set uh, there's 400 cards in this set that is a monster set fellas uh, card number one not surprisingly is Jordan I've got it up on your screen here so you can check it out he's yamming on Patrick Ewing who's absolutely helpless uh, as always, Ewing is wearing his giant knee pads and his giant towels around his arm. Sweatbands to you and me, but they're humongous. Uh, Jordan is catapulting off of him to punch it on his head. And in the background, Mark Jackson and uh, it looks like John Paxson are, are looking on. Uh, but uh, the rookies in the 1992 Stadium Club uh, set are, are real simple. You guys know it by now. Shaq and Zoe are the big ones, really, just Shaq. Uh, Alonzo Mourning, Leitner, and Sprewell are in there. And uh, a little tidbit of knowledge, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s dad, Jaron Jackson uh, Sr., is in this set. Uh, Jordan's card number one, as you can see here, but Jordan is also uh, card number 210. We won't look at that one um, in the base set as well. So he's got a card number one and a card number 210. Uh, the PSA 10 copy of card number one that we just looked at is about a $370 to $400 card. The PSA 10 of card number 210, Jordan, in the base set is about a $200 to $230 card. So the card number one is considered the the more optimal card to own if you're looking for the base card from that set. Uh, there is only one uh, insert set in 1992 Stadium Club, and it is the Beam Team. Uh, there is, and I'm going to click on here so you guys can look at it and we can look at it together. There is, however, two parallel sets. There are the members-only cards, uh, which are parallels to all of the 400, ba well, not all the 400, but I think maybe 396 base cards, not the checklist. Uh, so that's one parallel set. And then the other um, parallel set is the Beam Team Members Only, which is a parallel of the insert set. Um, the Beam Team Members Only, let me click on it here so we can look at it together, guys. So the Beam Team, uh, the Beam Team cards were distributed through... Um, uh, from this set, they, they, the pack odds are uh, 1 in 36 Series 2 packs. There are 21 players in this Beam Team set, as you can see on the screen. And so 21 times 36 yields an MJ pack odds of 1 in every 756 packs. Uh, the Jordan Beam Team that we're looking at right here uh, on your screen, let's see if I can pull it up, is... Um, is card number one in the beam team set as well. So he's card number one in the base set. He's card number one in the beam team set. Um, I always like to let you guys know before we start, this is my copy of this particular card. I own the 9.5 minimum gym. Nothing crazy here, uh, but this is mine front and back. I always like to be as transparent as possible and be forthcoming with what I own. Uh, again, I'm just going to tell you I'm going to be biased whether I own the card or not. I love Jordan cards. I love Jordan inserts. Uh, I would hype all of them. <laughs> I'm a hype man for Jordan cards whether I own the card or not. Uh, I'm just a big time Jordan fan. Uh, for those of you um, who aren't familiar with the members only and kind of how that works, uh, so the members only uh, Beam Team cards were distributed through the Tops Members Only Club and they have a print run of about 10,000 from what I understand. Uh, so that's the distinction between the members only. You can only get those inserts in the members only factory sets. Um, and uh, 14 of the 21 players in this Beam Team uh, product are Hall of Famers. And that's about it, guys, for the base set and, and kind of talking them through that. Let's start talking about the card itself. And so I'm going to pull mine back up here. Um, the card features MJ, you know, in his white uniform going up for a dunk with Danny Ainge helplessly uh, off of his right hip. 
uh, watching from behind, it looks like. I, I think that's Danny Ainge. I'm not totally sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's Danny Ainge. Um, the card kind of features these, these. I guess you want to call them beams, but really it's the velocity uh, that we understand from modern Panini stuff. It's I think that's called the velocity pattern. Um, that might be where uh, the pattern first emanated in 1992 from this particular card, uh, but that's when you see with the optic blue velocity and the optic black velocity and all that stuff, uh, the non rust optic stuff. But uh, I think this is kind of where, uh, this is the inception of that velocity pattern. Uh, the Stadium Club logo is printed in the center. Uh, you know, right here, um, let's see, I can make this a little bit bigger, right here uh, in the middle between, you know, the tops uh, symbol and uh, the Michael Jordan name in hollow foil. Um, the beam team is prominently displayed at the top up here, as you can see. Um, you know, in uh, pretty cool bold letters. It doesn't interfere with the net and the ball going through the hoop. Um, the back of the card features the same MJ from the front. It's just a little picture-in-picture -picture type deal. And then we always read the back. And so I'm going to read it real quick. It says, Athletes in the NBA are defined by the combination of power and grace they bring to the court. And perhaps no one in the sports history has been blessed with a more awesome blend of those gifts than Chicago's Michael Jordan. The sight of the six-time scoring champ uh, soaring through the lane on the way to a rim-rattling dunk over much taller opponents is one of the NBA's most thrilling images. Uh, and then below it, they have some funny, uh, some funny stuff. Winner of the NBA Slam Dunk Championship in 87 and 88. We know that when he beat Neek. Ranked fifth in the NBA in dunks in 1991 and 16th in 91-92. Uh, one of the one of only two players, along with Charles Barkley, under six foot seven, to finish among the top dunkers in 1991-92. So there's a pretty arbitrary stat for you. I am kind of surprised he only had 98 dunks. I mean, that's really barely more than one a game uh, in that season. That just seems odd because I just remember him dunking all the time, anytime and every time, and uh, and all over the place. Uh, but anyway, so as we always do, let's take a deep dive here into some of the digits and some of the numbers and stats and get let's nerd out a little bit. And so uh, as always, I've got card ladder pulled up. That's my data pricing uh, tool of choice. Uh, I am a card uh, card ladder uh, pro member. If you're not, you should be. Go check it out. Just Google it. Go to card ladder. Sign up. Trust me, it's well worth the money spent. Um, it's a fantastic product now, and it gets a little bit better every day as features, it seems like, are being added weekly. Uh, but what we've got on our screen is the, we're going to call them the base, and then we're going to call them the members only. So I shouldn't call it the base. Let's call it the regular beam team and the members only beam team. So the regular beam team, PSA 10, as you can see, is a Pop 99. The card last sold for $46.50. There's $17.89 of these graded, fellas. And so the gem percentage is only 6%. That's something to remember. So PSA 10 Beam Team Regular is a 6% gem rate. Super low. Uh, the last card, as you can see, sold for $46.50. The highest sale ever of this card was, go ahead and answer for me, everybody together, the first quarter of 2021, it sold for $17,600. So more than three times the last sale price. Ouch, if you were the dude that bought it right there. Uh, that's painful. Um, the card has sold 13 times in the last year. Uh, if we go down here and change card ladder graph to one year, you can see it sold 13 times. Uh, the average sale price was $69.08. Uh, believe it or not, this is a minus 45% rate of decrease. Uh, again, I need to stop really looking at these rate of gross because it all depends on the, the, you know, the price point and it's a little bit skewed. This would actually be, you know, significantly worse if we started with this February 13th record setting $17,600 sale. So I should probably kill this. But anyway, theoretically it is down, uh, well not theoretically, but it actually is down 45.9% or about 46% in the last year. Uh, the card uh, population, you can always click this arrow here on card ladder and see there's been two PSA 10s added since April of last year. Uh, looking at the BGS 9.5 of the regular uh, beam team, uh, card last sold for 2023. It's pop 169. So this is a probably it's a, a little bit less than twice as common as the PSA 10. Um, there are much fewer graded by BGS, only 1,066. So the gem rate for the BGS 9.5 is about three times the gem rate for the PSA 10. It's 16%. 
So uh, 16 out of every 100 gem. Uh, historically, the card last sold for 2023, about half of what the PSA 10 sells for. So about a two to one ratio, a little over two to one ratio. Um, and it just sold. So we have a really uh, good, nice, recent, reasonable comp. Uh, again, remember, as always, when we talk about BGS 9.5s, we've got to talk about the subgrades. Uh, just like not all PSA 10s are the same uh, with BGS, not only are not all BGS 9.5s the same, but the subgrades even reflect that and so it's even more of a variable when you're looking at bgs comps so just kind of keep that in mind guys when you're making a decision when you're chasing bgs 9.5 cards really go take a deep dive you can always go into card ladder and click view all sales you can go through each card and you can actually click on the cards and look at the pictures of the cards that sold on ebay or pwcc or golden or wherever and then you can examine the subs yourself uh, to make a better decision as to what that comp really was worth um, it's just invaluable to have that tool to be able to look at all those individual sales and examine the subs. Uh, this card has been down 24% in the last year, so about half as down as the uh, PSA 10, but it's a very similar trend if you look at the graph. This one's actually, it looked like, started to come back, right? So this is the fourth time in a row the card has sold for more than the time before. Well, I guess the third time in a row it has sold for more than the prior sale. So that's a good-looking trend. In other words, if we switch this over to, let's say, three months, there you go. The graph looks a lot better, up 55%. And so let's not get too carried away with these rate of growth percentages because they can be grossly misleading. Uh, the PSA 10, like we said, sold 13 times in the last year. The BGS 9.5, about the same, 11 times. Um, the pop has increased on the BGS 9.5 by one since April. So from 168 to 169. Uh, let's talk about the PSA 9 and the BGS 9 real quick because I want to get to the members only parallel and I don't want this to take forever like my videos always do. The PSA 9 is a pop 770. So you're talking about a huge growth from PSA 10 to PSA 9. This is not a rare insert. Okay, that's one thing we need to be clear about. Is it an important insert? Yes. Is it a recognizable insert? Yes. Is it a very collectible insert that many Jordan collectors feel they need and have to have in their collection if they're a 90s Jordan collector? Absolutely it is because it's one of his earliest inserts from 1992. But it is not a rare insert. So do not get this one confused with, uh, you know, Star Power Supremes or PMGs or uh, Noise Boys or, or you know, um, you know, big man on court or anything like that. Uh, this is not a rare insert. It's just a very popular insert, kind of like the Scoring Kings. Um, but uh, the gym rate, on, I'm sorry, not the gym rate, but the PSA 9 uh, grades about 43% of all cards grade a PSA 9. Uh, the BGS 9, about 45% of cards grade BGS 9. The last sold price for the PSA 9 and the BGS 9, this is interesting because this is pretty rare, okay? So PSA 9 last sold for 405. BGS 9 last sold for 500. Okay, that is rare. Usually the PSA 9 outsells the BGS 9, but not in this case. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, this PSA 9 on your screen has actually sold 112 or 111 times in the last year. That is a whopping number. And because so many have come to market, I think that has a lot to do with the rate of growth going down. So even if we take out the bullshit from the first quarter of 2021, let's go to six months. Uh, it's still down 20%. And I just think it's because it's an overpopulation. It's just a supply deal. I don't know why everybody was bringing their cards to market, but that's like one out of every seven beam teams in the world sold in the last uh, in the last year. That just seems really weird. Um, anyway, but uh, the BGS 9, by contrast, uh, has not sold as often. So if we sort that by in the last year, you'll see it only sold 36 times. Uh, that's like, you know, Less than one third as many times. And so I think that probably has a lot to do with why this card hasn't taken the beating uh, that the PSA 9 has. Um, but uh, in the last year, actually, this card's actually up 20%. Again, we started with this price point. If we had started with this price point, it would be drastically down like all the others. So we're going to chill with that uh, percentage change in one year. What I might do going forward on videos, guys, correct me if you think this is a bad decision, but instead of looking at the last year, let's just get rid of that um, first quarter and let's start looking at the last six months. It's a little more pertinent, a little more accurate, and a little le mis less misleading. It's certainly a little bit less depressing uh, than starting with all-time records on every one of these price points, which is kind of skew in the data um, anyway so let's move on uh, luckily card ladder also has tracked the data for the members only 
parallel whoops the members only beam team parallel so here we go let's put it in psa 10. okay so psa 10 regular was pop 99 uh this beam team members only uh, parallel insert in PSA 10 is pop 66, so about two thirds, exactly two thirds out of 736 grading. The gem rate is nearly identical. It's 9% for the PSA 10. Uh, the sold price on this last one is 4,300. So despite being uh, more scarce, it must not be as highly sought after as the base because the sold price is uh, actually less than the regular. Uh, the highest ever sale of the members only PSA 10 is 13.6. Uh, again, when did it happen? When do you think it happened? Uh, oh, here we go. In February, first quarter of 2021. No surprise. Uh, this card, surprisingly, has sold eight times uh, over the last year. That's a lot of times for a card that's only a pop 66. The average sale price over the last year is 6700 It's down a little bit from that average. But again, that average is going to be way out of whack because of the $13,600 sale. Uh, we're not going to look at percentages. No new members only PSA 10s have been added. We're going to switch to BGS 9.5. Same story, uh, different grade. No new BGS 9.5s have been added since April either. Uh, the BGS 9.5 is only a pop 17. Uh, I cannot give you the total number of these that have been graded by BGS, and I cannot give you the gem percentage because, go figure, Beckett, maybe I'm missing something, but when I search, I cannot find uh, the pop report for the members only. I can only find the pop report for the regular beam team on Beckett's website. I don't know what the deal is. I'm pretty good at navigating that, even though Beckett's uh, antiquated. Their site is so much harder to use than uh, PSA with how you need to search. Uh, you have to be much more precise and on point. Uh, PSA will find your set pretty much all the time as long as you're close. Uh, BGS is more difficult, but I'm pretty familiar with it. And I've never had this issue. I can't find the pop report for the beam team members only. If you can find it, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, the last sold price is 2310 for the 9.5, so a little bit over half of the PSA 10 sales price. And the highest sale ever is only $29.99. That's really surprising. And my guess is, you know, if we look at this, my guess is none of them sold. Well, there's one. Yeah, it sold. So it never sold in February or March, but uh, there's your highest sale ever. It's only 3000 bucks. Um, I think this card's a little bit undervalued, to be quite honest with you, fellas. Um, it's Pop 17. Uh, the, the combined PSA 10 and BGS 9.5 gem population is uh, 83. So it's under that magical 100 number for the combined gems. Um, this card has only sold twice in the last year. It just doesn't come to market as often. Um, I like this card at $29.99. And you know what? I need this card. So uh, it's on my radar in 2022 to grab it. I'd love to pair it with uh, with my regular 9.5. Uh, if I could find a minimum gem, that'd be great because I don't like to look to pay for premiums for the subgrades. Um, but I would love to add this exact very, uh, this exact you know, card that you're looking at on the screen, a minimum gem 9.5 members only and pair that with my regular beam team. Um, anyway, let's keep moving on. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so there's no BGS 10s. Uh, there, uh, there are no black labels for the beam team regular. There is, believe it or not, a BGS 10 for the beam team members only. Uh, but there is no black label. I wonder what a BGS 10 of the beam team members only, which is a pop one, would sell for on the open market. Comment below if you have any ideas. Uh, like we said, the 9.5 sold for uh, the 9.5 sold for 2,300 last. I gotta believe the BGS 10 would probably push nine ten thousand. Does that sound crazy? Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, the combined gem population for the regular beam team is 268. The combined gem population for the members only is 83. Like I just said. Uh, that's not a lot. So the members only is much more rare, but it doesn't seem to be selling for that much more. In fact, really not more in the PSA 10 version. Uh, that just seems odd to me. Um, it's significantly more rare, fellas. The members only is, but for some reason, the, the regular uh, beam team sells for a little bit more in PSA 10. Um, how often does it sell on the market? The combined gems, BGS and PSA, sold 24 times between them for the regular beam team in the last year. The combined PSA and BGS members only sold only 10 times in the last year. Um, the, what's on eBay? Okay, so every I like to take you guys through this. So I put my search on the screen. I searched 1992 Beam Team 1 Jordan PSA. Okay, uh, we wanted to see how many pulled up. 63 results came up. If we plug in 
1992 Bean Team 1, and I put 1 in there because it's card number 1, if you recall. Michael Jordan, member only. I didn't put members because uh, I thought I might miss some because I don't know if they put an apostrophe. Uh, I figured member would catch it, uh, would also catch member, and member is possessive. But uh, I just put member only. Probably could have just put only if you if you really think about it. Let's see what that does. How many, how many has that got? Let's see. That would show 28 results, so the same, uh, including one that ends in, uh, in you know, a day and three hours. But uh, tons of options to choose from. That's really what I was getting at. Uh, if you're looking to buy and rip wax and try to pull one of these bad boys yourself, I've plugged in 92 Stadium Club Series 2 Sealed Box Basketball. Remember, it comes in Series 2 packs. And uh, there's 37 options. Uh, from what I can tell, the average box sells from anywhere between 315 to 340. Um, you got to be careful with bricking. I've opened some of these packs before. When I say bricking, I mean like, you know, uh, sticking together, sticking, pulling the surface paper off the card in front or behind. Big time issues with that, depending on how the box was kept. So really, you're taking that into your own hands. If you're not an expert on wax, I would definitely get with somebody who is and ask questions uh, before you bid and buy a $400 box or a $340 box uh, because all the cards may be bricked together, in which case all of them are going to be absolutely useless if when you take one card off another, it peels the surface off. I've had issues with that. I've got videos uh, from where I opened a pack of, uh, I think it was Skybox Premium, where that was the case, and it was basically a useless a useless endeavor. Uh, but anyway, make sure you're looking for Series 2, not Series 1. Uh, like, uh, for instance, this listing here, you see Series 1 and Series 2. Don't think it's two Series 2 boxes. Pay attention, guys. You don't want to pull Series 1. You want to pull Series 2. Um, uh, we've talked about what I own and what I grade. I own the 9.5. I'll pull it up again. This is my card. Uh, I like it very much. I'm very content with it. It's not the greatest Jordan insert in the world, but it's one you've got to have. It's a box you've got to check if you want to be a complete Jordan collector from 90s. Uh, so I've got that 9.5. Again, I think I need the members only to be to have a complete collection and be satisfied with it. And so I will be looking to pick up a members only BGS 9.5 minimum gem at some point. If I've got to pick up a PSA 10, I will, but honestly, I'd rather pick up the 9.5 because this is not a card where I really want to pay that 2x ratio for the PSA 10 over BGS 9.5 premium. That's just me. Um, uh, all of the cards, we always categorize the particular insert that we're talking about on Explore the Card every Friday. We always categorize it into low, which is uh, zero to five thousand dollars, uh, mid, which is five thousand to ten thousand dollars, high end, which is ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars or grail level cards, which are 20,000 to a bazillion, right? From 20,000 to PMG green. Uh, so all of these cards in all grades, except for obviously the BGS 10, would qualify as low end Jordan inserts. That being said, you know, the PSA 10s are pushing five and they have been way over five uh, during first quarter 2021. So they've been there, they've been to mid and even been into the high, but uh, right now they've settled into that low end. So if you could pick one up for under five grand, now's a pretty good time to do that. I'm not telling you what to do or what to buy or give an investment advice, but um, that is where it is right now. All of them are low end. Uh, some of the cards that have uh, similar market value, let me see if I can go back to list. Some of the cards that have similar market value to um, to the Beam Team, 92 Beam Team, uh, are the Net Assets uh, PSA 10, which is pictured uh, right here. Okay, so there's your Net Assets PSA 10. This card has also already been featured on a prior episode of uh, Explore the Card. Uh, another option is, let's see if I can go to next. Uh, another option uh, in the, about the same uh Price point is the PSA 10 version of this 1998 Tops Season's Best. A lot of people call it Bombardiers because as you can see, it's printed at the top. And you can see this is a really pretty card. It's almost like raining colors in the background. And there's, uh, well, I'm not going to say, well, I can't say it out loud on a video. Uh, let's go back to the list. And then another option in about the same price category of four to $5,000 is actually the next year's uh, Stadium Club Beam Team, which is a significantly more rare card than the 1992 Beam Team PSA 10, um, but it's not as highly sought after. As you can see, there's the great Kendall Gill, had some of the greatest arms in the early 90s in the NBA, uh, but Jordan's yamming on him. 
so uh, those are some cards that have uh, that are you know kind of similar cards to uh, to make a decision between. Comment below which ones you would rather have out of these four cards that you see on the screen right here. The card we featured today. The next year's Beam Team from 1993, the Net Assets, which we've already featured on a prior episode of Explore the Card, or this uh, Bombardier's PSA 10. All those cards are priced about the same. Let me know which one, uh, which one you would want um, out of those cards. Uh, actually, I, I shouldn't say the 92 BGS 9.5. The 92 Beam Team PSA 10 is priced about the same as these, so you'd have to choose between those four, uh, the PSA 10, not the 9.5. If you're asking me, my order would be Net Assets 1, so right here, number one, oops, sorry. Uh, it would be Beam Team 93 seconds right here. And it would be Bombardier's third. And then the card we're featuring today would be fourth just because it's easiest to snag, right? And so I'm really working in reverse order of uh, how populated uh, that particular card and that particular grade is. Uh, on the Cajun Cardboard scale of relevance, I give the Beam Team a five. It's not because I don't think you need it in your collection. I do. I think it's a staple of every uh, Jordan collector, especially if you're an incoming new 90s Jordan collector looking to get your feet wet and pick up a card. You know, I think Scoring Kings, I think Beam Team is probably the two that I would start with. Uh, comment below if I'm leaving some cards out that you think are great uh, starter inserts uh, that are obtainable by a brand new Jordan collector in the 90s. But if I was telling my friend who was looking to get into Jordan 90s, I would probably put Beam Team and Scoring Kings in some grade, you know, obviously not a PSA 10, but in some grade uh, at the top of their list of inserts to get first, uh, just to get their feet wet. So I would give it a five because this 1992 Stadium Club Beam Team uh, regular is obtainable. Uh, at any given time, you can probably go find yourself a gem copy. You could find 20 uh, mint copies on eBay right now probably or somewhere on Facebook or Instagram uh, So that's it for today guys uh, Which insert or parallel would you like me to feature in episode number 14 and beyond? Um, let me know. Let me switch you back over uh, let me know which one you'd like me to feature. I will uh, let the cat out of the bag. I've already chosen the one for the next episode, and I'm going to give you a hint. Comment below, and let's see if somebody can get it right. Uh, it is also an insert from a 1992 set, so that really narrows it down because we're going to talk about another very early year 1992 Jordan insert next Friday. Uh, see if you can comment below and guess, uh, guess which insert we're going to be talking about uh, which we're going to be talking about next week. Um, that's it, fellas. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you to Card Ladder, Cardboard Connection, PSA, Beckett, even though they didn't have a pop report for members only for some reason, Beam Team, Trading Card Database, PWCC, and BasketballReference.com. That's the uh, basically the library that I use to provide the content that I send you guys and put up on YouTube on my channel. Uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe, like, and comment. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Uh, next episode of Explore the Card comes out the very next Friday. It's always coming out Friday at 6 a.m. so you can watch it while you drink coffee uh, or watch it on your way in the car on the way to work. Uh, don't watch it. Just put it up somewhere safe. Drive the car. Look at the road, please. Uh, especially in Louisiana. We got enough crazy ass drivers out there. Don't watch my video while you're driving. Just listen to it. Uh, watch it later. But um, I do PWCC uh, weekly Sunday auction previews every Thursday and then I do recaps uh, every Monday. So uh, stay tuned for those. And I've also got a lot of other funny, uh, interesting content coming out. You know, top 10 cards in my collection list for particular players or, um, you know, different stuff like that. Just off the wall stuff. Uh, so stay tuned. Hit the bell icon for notifications when those come out. Those come out randomly. I kind of space them in uh, my scheduled stuff, which is uh, two videos every Monday, one every Thursday, and then one every Friday. And then just some other stuff scattered in between. Anyway, that's enough, uh, enough talk. Uh, not bad. 28 minutes. I'm getting better. Some of these took 50 minutes in the early days, but uh, I'm getting a little bit better. Hopefully I don't ramble too much. Uh, have fun. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. Peace, fellas.